Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 680. Welcome everyone that is joining us here in person and those that are watching online. If you are watching online, please leave your name and what town, city, state, or country you're watching from, then I will share that during announcements. Our service begins on page 355. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as we sing a song of praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we have our first reading. A reading from the list from the book of De Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is the opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, Nephtali, the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the plain. That is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it for your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab. At the Lord's command, he was buried in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites went for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him. Doing as the Lord had commanded, Moses never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all the servants and his entire land and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, We'll be saying portions of Psalm 90 responsibly by whole verse. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O oh Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and, in, and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourself know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated as Philippi, as you know, we are encouraged in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the spirit of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from dissent or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please morals, but to please God, who tests our heart as you know and as God in our witness. We never came with the words of flattery or with a pretext of for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made a demands of apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tending care for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, and I will put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can it be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. John, I noticed you had a lot of time, Mr. <laughs> Love your neighbor. As we approach Halloween, I can't help but think of how my brother and I try to love our neighbors growing up. It was in the early 1970s, and we had a rash of pumpkin thefts from people's front yards that were in displays. We figured it was a bunch of hooligans stealing and smashing them for a prank. So, my brother and I decided to carve our large jumbo pumpkins. These things were huge. About a week Now, by the time Halloween night came along, the pumpkins were a gooey mess, barely held together by their inner strand. We decided if the hooligans enjoyed taking and smashing pumpkins so much, 
we'd help them with ours. We very carefully moved the smelly, gooey pumpkins to the top of two uh, round fence posts. I couldn't believe that they didn't tip over or just squish in on themselves. And we then went inside to see if our kindness would be appreciated. Sure enough, about 8 o'clock, two older teens each came by, grabbed a pumpkin with arms spread wide, and hugged the pumpkins to their chests as they lifted them off the fence posts. But instead of having a pumpkin in their arms, all they had was an ooey, gooey, smelly, orange pumpkin guts all over their clothes. Now, there was no doubt in anyone's minds who saw these two teens on what they were up to. I guess they didn't appreciate the loving kindness my brother and I tried showing them. Last week, we read about how Jesus had silenced the Pharisees with his answer, Give th therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Now the Pharisees had gathered with the Sadducees, the lawyers, and their question is going to focus on the matter of the law and the commandments in the law. Jesus is going to use this as an occasion to drive home what the great responsibility of someone of God. Now, in our gospel reading, Jesus quoted the Shema. It was a liturgical prayer which Jews recited every morning and every evening that expressed how peoples had and the love of God. The Sadducee, did I use the, this, I think I'm cutting up. See if this won't cut out. So the Sadducee who asked the question about, uh, didn't actually didn't ask a question about the second commandment, but Jesus' answer demonstrates how one command involves and leads to another. Jesus used this opportunity to point out that all of the 600 plus laws that the Pharisees came up with to make certain that the Jews kept the commandments weren't necessary. All their laws, all the commandments were summarized by the two great commandments that Jesus gave us. Love God and love your neighbor. Both commandments are related and are vital. They're the basics of Christianity. And I'm sure you've all seen on, in film clips or uh, how small communities come together to help pick each other's crops at harvest time or how a community comes together to raise a barn. Loving our neighbor as God loved us. Do you remember how the country came together after 9-11? the pure outpouring of love amidst our shock and tragedy. That was 22 years ago. More recently and closer to home is how the folks in our diocese came together in support of the folks in Uvalde to offer assistance in response to that tragic shooting of school children at Robb Elementary. The way that we show God we love him is about, about how we treat people. Whenever we demonstrate kindness, patience, gentleness, people see the Lord's love at work through us, especially when the other person has been ignored, mistreated, or is suffering. Our relationship with others demand priority over other things that won't last 
or won't matter in a few years. Now, while we're reading about the two commandments, if we love God and love people, we'll naturally obey the rest of the commandments. Jesus' teaching isn't about how we feel about God and our neighbor, but what we will do. We're to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Doing so focuses our activity to a narrow path that God has created for us to walk on. It's the basis of our obedience to God. It shows that our love for God is number one in our lives. Love for God and love for all those who are made in his image form the cornerstone of everything God says to us in his word. We can read in Paul's letter to the Romans, love is the fulfillment of the law. To help them understand this command to love God, Christ adds this to be done with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. In essence, if you're to love God with all that you are, with every part of your being, every essence of you is to love God first. Love the Lord your God. Love. Eternal love. Unconditional love is the center of our relationship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And here, Christ puts love of God as the foundation to a right relationship with God. Maybe someone's spiritual life isn't what it should be because they haven't set their heart their soul, their mind, first and foremost on Christ. They haven't really considered their thoughts on what it would be like to bring in themselves into a deeper relationship with God. Maybe their thoughts are on the worldly life. In their terms of time and talents, he isn't their first priority. For some, when it comes to terms of finance, God is an afterthought. As disciples of Christ, he is and needs to remain first and foremost. And I think most folks can say, I don't covet my neighbor's possessions. But the command is to love, to truly love, to truly share our possessions, our wealth, in our life, our heart, not only with those that we're close to, but with all our neighbors. And this can really be hard to do and isn't something most people want to hear. For many, how is the personal relationship of the commandment a reality? Jesus commands us to love God in and through a personal relationship in him and through our neighbor loving as ourselves. Now we had an exercise about five years ago when I was at the Seattle College for Congregational Development in which we all had to write something positive about one or more members in our small group after the third day that we were there. Now we took turns responding in no particular order. When we were finished, I had a profound life-changing moment. One woman in our group was a priest dressed in civilian clothes. With teary eyes, she said nobody said anything about her. Several people had multiple comments, and these were the active, talkative, or the easy to notice ones. Love your neighbor as yourself. I made it a point in the future that whatever group or 
a team I was in, I would make sure to point and say something positive to every member there. Love your neighbor as yourself. I've always made it a point to approach and thank folks who are doing their job, whatever it might be. Window washer, garbage man, you know, the folks that were, are in the service industry. These are the easily forgotten people. And it is amazing to interact with them and really hear their stories. And I came across a story I'd like to share. During a Saturday afternoon community service day, I was walking down a narrow side street in Compton, California, heading towards one of the work sites sponsored by a local church. Now, it was the end of a local, uh, end of a work day and dozens of yellow shirted ch church volunteers, maybe 50 in all, were streaming out of the site getting ready to head off to lunch after finishing a complete makeover at a local house. Now, I was about six or eight houses away when I passed a married couple working in their own yard. I paused to compliment the woman on her roses, and she asked me what we were doing down the street. I replied, that we represented a band of churches united in our desire to serve the city. Then we continued chatting about the radical neighborhood transformation she had witnessed by our simple acts of goodness. Now, during my conversation with this woman, her husband, who had been weed whacking on the other side of the front yard, when he saw my yellow volunteer shirt, he turned off his weed whacker, set it down, and started walking straight towards me and his wife. I'll never forget his words. After looking me into my eyes, he nodded approvingly towards the renovated house down the street and said, I love your heart. Where can I get a heart like yours? Flabbergasted, I simply said, we got our hearts from Jesus, and he would be glad to give you one like his too. Before I left to head off, we had a great conversation about the unparalleled gospel of Jesus Christ and his power to change hearts, homes, neighborhoods, cities, and lives. Love your God and love your neighbor. As disciples of Christ, we have a couple of opportunities to show our love through community. Trunk or treat on Tuesday evening and the Divine Cactus Festival Parade on Saturday. But let's not stop there. Let's look for opportunities on the other days the rest of this week. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the paper, people can be formed on, on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that who confess your name may be united in your truth, live in your love, and reveal in your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one and another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the services of others in honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all that who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that maybe we may share with all your saints an eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the unity. We had a problem with our printer, so I'm just making sure you got that piece this way. We pray for the unity of the Anglican com Communion and the Episcopal Church. Anglican Cycle of Prayer, the Anglican Church of the M Messalania, Diocesan Cycle of Prayer. Give thanks for all saints, Corpus Christi, and all saints, San Benito. Presiding Bishop Michael. Bishops David and David, Priest Father Dexter, Diocesan Seminarians, President Joe and Governor Greg, we especially pray for the strength and healing for Harry, Joanne, Rob, Roberta, O.T., Allison, John, Jameson, Cherie, Mike, John, Aaron, Juan, Ty, Eric, Hector, Angelique, Ronald, Michael, Lacey, Roberto, Carmen, Bob, Robert, Sandra, Dorothy, Kim, and Phyllis. For those who have died, military prayer list Haley, for persecuted Christians everywhere, for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, 
Third Street Closet, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, and World Missions. to add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord. The Lord makes it. She's getting better and better. I know. I saw you. <laughs> John, peace the Lord. I'll be here. Peace the Lord. Thank you for reading. The Lord. Okay. <laughs> He's wide awake. <laughs> If you're noticing online, our passing piece taking a little bit longer because who can resist Jameson? I mean, his eyes are open. He's got his little bottle. So <laughs> um, we got feedback uh, from one of our online viewers, Marge in Rhode Island, that I know she said whenever Meg comes walking up and she sees her, she wants to wave. So if you start seeing people, wait, we're waving to all of you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome, we have in Corpus Christi, we have Potato, Atticus, and Allison. We also have Joe and Karen in Westlaco. We have Pat Lease in New York. We have Marge in Rhode Island. We have Roberta in Natalia and everyone else. I want to say hello to Alex in Slovakia. Uh, I know everyone else that's going to be uh, watching us later today and tomorrow. Welcome to our online community of faith. Um, I do have a, I'd like to first of all give you an update on Harry. So since um, you know, he's become ill, I've, I've visited him maybe four times and the first three times I think I had a total of maybe six minute conversation with him. He's at BAMC right now and he's getting treatment. He spoke with me, I mean he spoke for over three hours. Three hours. He was hairy. He was hairy. He was cutting jokes. He was, you know. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to share that with you. And he does appreciate 
all of your prayers, and he wanted to say that he loves each and every one of you. Okay. I'd like to, uh, let's see, on Tuesday, let's see, Tuesday from 5 to 7, we do have our community trunk or treat. It, we could really use help. We're going to have tables set up with goodies. So we had Javier, Cherie, Karen, and Meg stuffed 450 white bags of goodies. You know, it was amazing. So whatever isn't handed out, I think last year we had 125 kids. Whatever isn't handed out on Tuesday, then it'll be with uh, the folk, John and Elson and, and a cadre of others uh, for the float in the Divine Cactus Festival to toss out to the kids. Wednesday, we are doing a Holy Eucharist service here. Instead of evening prayer at 6, we're doing a Eucharist service at 6. What I ask that, um, if only if you want to, but I'm going to be giving, we're going to be handing out, just like last year, the tall candles in memory of a loved one. And if you'll have a photograph of a loved one, we are going to process in. We will have a small altar set up, and Meg made a special wall hand, uh, hanging the um, Virgin Guadalupe. So she'll be, she'll be there. And uh, after the, oh, and then also, if you have names that you would like read during the Eucharist for the saints that were in your life, I do have the list from last year, but if you have, um, you want to give me names, I just need that before Wednesday, so, or even Wednesday uh, itself, because I'll write them in. So I'll do that. Afterwards, you all are going to be taking back your own candle, you know, for your homes. So that'll be available to you. Um, let's see. So we're doing a combination, All Saints and Dia de los Muertos. Um, we were watching Texas Eats on Channel 12, and they had Pan Muertos. So we're going to see if we might be able to find it in a local area. Um, Meg's never made it before, and I'm not going to volunteer her to do that, but knowing Meg, um, she might try. So we'll see if that's available. Uh, I have something written on the bottom, and I don't know what I wrote. Oh, so if you haven't got, we got our uh, three-month or quarterly day-by-day -day bread readings booklets, so make sure you grab one before you leave. And, and those of you that are at home that would like one mailed to you, oh, please let me know, and I will share that. Uh, after the service today, we do have an assortment of goodies that are back there to share, so please eat them all so I don't have to. Uh, they're just too tempting. Okay. I think that's all the announcements we have, and again, we are really looking forward to November 19th. And November 19th will be the baptism of Jameson. So you're all invited to either be here in person or watch us online. Okay. Yes, we're going to have a reception afterwards. So a big reception. Uh, oh, one more thing. This was on our door. Um, if you don't mind, please share for your fellowship. The Divine Food Pantry is doing on November 4th. Is that a Saturday? Same day as parade. Okay, but they're doing a... So after the parade, if you want to go on by the Divine Food Pantry, they have all kinds of assorted things that they're going to... Uh, garage sale. They're going to have a garage sale. So. Okay, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 372.
Our service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Fill us the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. John, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May your Lord Jesus Christ bless you in the coming week. Joanne, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Javier, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Meg, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant the strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 505.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Everyone's invited to join us in the back. Thank you, Ellison.